What's up guys, Benchmarks here back in with another video and in this video I'm going to show you guys on how you can make a Mario Bros server on your Linux VPS. So let's get started. So first of all, we're going to have to download PuTTY and FileZilla. So PuTTY is a system client and FileZilla is attribute client. So uh, FileZilla is used to transfer the files to the server and this is fine. We of course need to connect with that. Uh, our Linux server. So let's get started. So every link that I be using in this video will be put in the description of this video. So go do take them out. So yeah, once it's uh, once you are in this link, just click on download buddy and choose whatever system you have. So and download and install it. So for for FileZilla, uh, you need to go to FileZilla client and download FileZilla client. So once everything is done and set up. Uh, what you're gonna do, need to do is we need, we need to open uh, Linux GSM. So Linux G games GSM is a Linux game server manager. So which is this command line tool for quick, simple deployment and management of Linux dedicated game server. So uh, this tool will help you uh, achieve the game server or develop the game server without need to learn uh, Linux commands. So if you don't have any um, history of using Linux or you don't have uh, the time to learn Linux, this is the best thing for you because it's, it's an automated uh, tool for everything you do. Okay, so once you're done, you need to log into Putty. Just open Putty up and just put in the IP of your uh, host that you got from the hosting. And open it and just put in root or whatever username and password you got from your host. So once you're done, you just go inside here. So as you can see, I'm inside the root server of the Jap hosting because I'm using a Jap hosting, but you can use any hosting you want, but I of course recommend Jap hosting because the price and the performance they offer is top notch. As you can see, I'm currently using root server from them. And as you can see, the price is very good. And as you can see, um, you can choose CPU cores, like let's say eight cores and 16 gigabits of RAM and at least 120 gigabytes of SSD and a fire server system because this uh, CPU is better for game servers because Rust is uh, of course CPU bounded game server game uh, so that's why you need to at least use a better system so you can choose any location you want because uh, they offer uh, Europe, America and other regions as well so just choose it and uh, just install whatever of your system you want into DOS or, or Debian or you can okay, even choose more IP addresses but one is of course enough but if you want to uh, host like two three servers at once uh, you were with using default port you need to have extra IP address for that and you can see the price it came with 37 euros per month at this with this much offer system is very cheap guys so do check them out I, or I will put the direct link to the description of this video. Just click on them and just go to and visit and purchase if you want some servers from them. And or you can even get game server from them, like Rust server. Uh, if you don't want to do any hassle, hassle or something like that. So you can see a lot. They provide a lot of game servers, and you can choose a Rust server. Uh, you can see this is a rust and we're gonna side mode because we are using a modded trying to host a modded server and you can see you can choose slots like let's say we gonna host a server for 80 slots and at least use a uh, fire quick kilobytes at least use 12 or 16 gigabytes ram but eight will also be enough but and as you can see uh this they recommend using the premium one but you can see the games uh, game server will at least of course cost a lot of more so that's why i recommend using a uh, root server because they are more powerful and you can host more servers on it as well so once uh it's done so let's start the job okay guys so once you're here just go you can see the compatibility uh it's a minimum recommended distros are even to nine one just six model and so just seven okay so once you're here you need to install some dependencies for your server so currently I'm using Debian 10, so you just copy the Debian 10. If you are using Debian 11 or you can use uh, even to whatever you have right now, just control C to copy and right click to paste, okay? We need to install some dependencies, but I already have this in my server, so it, is not, it won't download anything at all, but for you, it might ask uh, for you to press Y or something like that to install for the first time. So just do whatever this says, this step by step. So once you're done, you need to go to install tab and you can see we need to use a uh, create a user 
and a login for your server. We can do it in a root, server, root user as well, but it's not recommended at, at of course. So let's create a user, a server, or you can choose any name you want, but I'm just gonna use the real server and you need to put password. You can use this password because for the best security was ensure strength and so you can use this password or you can put any password you want. I'm gonna put mine. So this password will be used to uh, uh, put files on your server using FileZilla. So make sure to uh, remember that password. So once it's done, everything is done. Now you change the user to a server that you just created. And once you're here, you can just copy paste everything up. You don't need to do anything at all. You need to do. You don't need to do anything at all, guys. And now we can finally install the server. So once it's installed, let it install. It might take some time because it needs to download the game files from the uh, Steam server. So it might take any downloading some configuration files as well. So I'll pause the video and I'll be back once it's done. Hello guys. So uh, once it's done, it will uh, sit like this. So continue. Uh, let me show you so no, yes, okay. So, this is still installing some files for you guys. So, let's wait and it will take some dependencies that we just install. So, if, if something is missing, it will install over here and we can just go back and install everything up from the root user. But I'm sure that all the dependencies should be installed because we just use the dependency installer from here. So, this is now installing our server using system cmd so it will take some time like some minutes so we can pause the video right now and i'll be back once it's done uh, welcome back guys so it's now it's done so it's asking us to uh, allow users assets to be sent to the user server but we just kind of say no to the spam and once it's done as you can see it is now done but now before starting the server we need to configure something like that so first of all, let's install the uh, Oxide on the server. So Oxide is needed to use uh, modded mod sections on our server. So to do that, just type in our server mods just install. So it will take if mods is installed on the server or not, but by default it will not be installed. So we need to do it. Uh, but yeah, so asking which mod to install we just gonna type rux oxide and it will download the rux oxide on the server and now it should be done so once it's done just leave it like this just open a filezilla okay once filezilla is open just put on the ip of your host username will be rust server and password will be whatever you have used code will be 22 by default if you haven't changed just type in 22 and it will be like this so just you need, once you are here just go inside server files go inside cf uh go, go inside server or server cfc and download server.cfc so you can edit it and put it back in server you can open it using notepad or you can use open it using anything at the notepad process whatever you have so as you can see here you can configure a lot of things like you can change the name of your server and you can change the description of your server from here like uh, this will be the header image you can choose the header image you can you can uh, put any header image you want so from the image here or uh, description you can change but i'm not going to change anything at all right now because let's leave it as it is if you want to change anything just change it like this so let's say if you want to put url as your discord just type in just change this with your discord uh, gg slash whatever you have of your link and just control s pop base i mean save and just put it back in like this just upload it like this and override it and it will uh, change edit it so but now we're gonna have to change some more things so we can go back we just go to inside lgsm go inside lgsm config.lgsm go inside our server go uh just uh download default.cfg and comment the cfc okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open default.cfg so this is the default config 
uh, you cannot edit a config here because uh, as you can see this is the default config any changes will be overwritten so we just copy everything from here and we're gonna open common to cfg so uh, uh, when you put uh, configuration common to cfg so it will be installed on all the instances so it doesn't matter because we are just using one instances for a minute so just remove that thing matter so now we are here we can change the port we can change the everything at all because we don't need to change port if you don't want to just leave it as it is but we need to change all good password uh, for now just let's use uh, some random password so like you okay mm, we can change the server name here like let's say this is the bench bench March this server okay you can choose any name you want so game mode vanilla server uh, label we don't show anything at all custom okay let's you can change it from here server said that it will generate the world uh you can change the world size to whatever you want so the range is thousand to six thousand uh so once she's done just control s to save and put it back in like that and override it and it will be done so you are done from here and uh, you have configured everything but now you need to go inside server files uh, but first uh, after configuring it let's start the server now start so uh, for the first time it will generate the world and uh, uh, it will take some time for it to load because we are generating the world for the first time. So as you can see, this is a benchmark test server because we just changed the name of our server. We can change, change the control, uh, web server control, but be reminded that it will say like information, please uh, press control B to then edit D to console, which is console. You cannot uh, press control C. Uh, if you press control C, it will just exit the server and it will cross. So as you can see, it is now warming up the assets and you can just reload here and oxide folder will appear here as you can see this is the oxide folder where we put plugins here uh, we can download plugins from umod or you can buy plugins from codeflinks uh, if you just want to use free plugins you can just go from umod and once you are in here go to plugins and choose rust and you can filter by most downloaded one because uh we of course have to use gather manager because this is the and once it's downloaded uh you can download use vanish as well because it's needed image library no give notice so this is this one is uh needed furnace bleeder we can smelt uh, rust kits something like that and more you want like uh, so just download whatever you want to use and just open FileZilla and get back uh, wherever your files are downloaded. You can check where it's downloaded. Just open my folder. As you can see, it downloaded in desktop and Rust server. Get back to desktop and Rust server. And as you can see, these are our plugins. So what you need to do is open a plugins folder on our server and right click and upload. Right click, upload, 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 right click, and upload it like this. So it will auto install on our server like this and once the server is loaded you will see configuration file for it generated auto generated here but right now it is not installed the server because it's still creating the map for us guys so just wait some time and when, once it loads it will auto load the server i mean plugins so just control b and b to exit out of it uh so i'll just wait until it's done so i'll be back when everything is done like uh, the maps are generated and the configs files appear here and i'll show you how to configure okay so i'll be back once it's done hello guys welcome back so once it's done the server is now booting up we can just refresh here and the config file will appear here we can just download the configs and we can change a lot of things here like let's just, just download two and um, this open it and it opens in the Facebook studio code it doesn't matter so you can choose like uh, 
multipliers so let's make a uh, quickest smile to be five times much better and fuse field is to be using two x and uh, so yeah and control s to save it and just upload back in and it will use the new configuration file but you may need to reload the wait oxide or reload uh wait it's still loading uh the server guys so we need to wait and as you can see it's, it's like it likes it is like that only so you just download the file from here and just open it on notepad or any, anything you want and you can change the stack size as well so let's say you, we, we make the stack size five times the, the, the vanilla one and just control s save and upload it but we need to reload the plugins here like oxide or reload uh quick smelt and oxide or load stack size controller now it will reload the plugins and the new configuration file will be sorted or you can just connect to the orcon file using the rust admin and uh, just moderate the server from there and i think this is much for the server right now guys and to give permission for you like you need to have permissions for bring over tool to use or any permission you want like let's say um, we need permissions to be able to use uh, i think which is that quick smell so so as you can see this is the permission that we want to grant to the user so i think and this or this should be granted to every user so let's say uh we, we, what we can do is offsite the you and the grant user group Oh, sorry, not user group. I said a grant group default, and just try to the paste, and this will be granted to every user, guys. So, uh, if you want to, you just only you want to grant to admin, you just do outside the grant group admin and quick smell the choose. So it will only be granted to admin and then others. So that's it, guys. So thank you for watching the video guys i hope you guys like the video and if you have any problems regarding this video just comment down below and i'll be happy to help and please make sure to check out chat posting and use my uh referral code because uh that will grant you 20 discount and thank you for watching the video guys i hope you like it it's benchmarks here signing out